Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are now learning the chapter Human Reproduction and we learn up to implantation. Today let us learn about some embryonic layers or extra embryonic layers which give protection to our developing embryo. So there are four different layers, uh, protective layers in the embryo. The first one is the amnion. Second is yolk sac. Third, allantois and fourth, chorion. So we know that in the embryo, during gastrulation, what happens? The ectoderm and the endoderm will form. And from the ectoderm, there forms a middle layer called the mesoderm as well. Because we are triploblastic organisms. Now rest of the organs are all developing from this mesoderm, ectoderm and endoderm. Here, this mesoderm can join with the ectoderm to form membranes. Also, mesoderm can join with the endoderm as well. So, these three layers actually form these four protective extra embryonic layers. So, first one we are talking about is amnion. As you know, amnion is a cavity called amniotic cavity. It is a fluid filled cavity. So, what is the fluid inside that? It is amniotic fluid. And this layer is actually formed by mesoderm and ectoderm. What is the function of this fluid? It prevents the desiccation of or drying of the embryo during its development and also since it is a fluid it acts as a shock absorber. The second layer is beyond this, this is the embryonic gut. Below this there comes the yolk sac. Yolk sac is formed by endoderm and mesoderm. And what is the function? First four weeks, the early stages, the embryo derives its nutrition from this yolk sac. During this time, RBC for the embryo is also produced by the yolk sac and it is forming a part of the embryonic gut. Now coming to the next uh, pouch, sausage like a pouch that is called a allantois. Allantois is also formed by mesoderm and endoderm. So yolk sac is formed by endoderm, mesoderm. Allantois is also formed by mesoderm, endoderm. Another common thing to remember here is both are starting from the embryonic gut. So here it is acting as a urinary bladder of the developing embryo and it also supplies blood vessels to the placenta. The next covering is like the first one like amnion that is ectoderm and mesoderm. So you can remember the first two that is outside are ectoderm and mesoderm, the other two inside are the endoderm and mesoderm. So here chorion is actually acting as a covering and it will join with the trophoblast and later trophoblast villi will form or chorionic villi we say because uh, it is actually forming the placenta which is a connection between the mother and the baby. Chorionic villi actually forms a direct connection with the mother's blood that we will learn now in the next part that is called a placenta formation. Baby lies in the mother's womb for 9 months and a plus or minus 10 days. So that is called a gestation period. Just now we saw when we learned the embryonic layers that this is happening within a fluid cavity. cavity. That means the baby is inside the amniotic cavity which is filled with the amniotic fluid. So these 9 months, baby needs oxygen for respiration, it needs nutrients for its development and also it needs to release carbon dioxide or other nitrogenous waste from its body. So all these have to be done through certain contact with the mother's body. So that structure or the unit forming between the mother's body and the baby is called a what the placenta. So the chorion is our external membrane. Outside the chorion there forms a uh, structure called a trophoblast. You know trophoblast is the outer layer of the uh, uh, blastocyst we learn implantation stage right. So this trophoblast and chorion layer uh, are together forming that villi that is called a chorionic villi. So now this may look a little complicated but you understand this is the uterine wall. So this is the ov oviduct and uterine wall is coming. So the, uh, the, you know that due to the pres uh, presence of progesterone the endometrium is very thick and the endometrium during that luteal phase has formed a spiral uh, blood vessels also uh, to uh, enable the nutrients everything to the baby because everything is coming from the mother's blood to the baby. So these blood vessels contain the arteries which are having oxygenated blood that is why I drew it in red color and veins which are blue in color because it is deoxygenated blood. So it comes from this uterine wall to this black area this is called a kind of basal plate. A plate like structure forms in addition to this uterine wall. Through that basal plate this opens into a space here. There is a space available in the mother's side that is 
uh, filled with the blood. How this blood is coming from this artery and just filling this area. So, you know, in our body, everywhere the blood is flowing through only the blood capillaries. But in this case, there is no blood capillary here. The blood is just uh, flowing out into a space and it is filling there. Okay. Now, uh, the deoxygenated blood now can be taken back by the veins from here. So, it's actually a blood space forming here. At the same time, this is the baby. So, from baby, there is a connection to the mother that is called a umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is a vascular connection. It has got arteries and a vein in it. So, from baby's blood, the artery is coming. So, this blue color I have marked as artery. You know, the baby's blood does not have oxygen in it. It is going to collect it from the mother's blood. Okay. So, here also, though it is artery, it is containing deoxygenated blood because it is going to get the oxygen, right? But since it is starting from the heart and going out, it is called an artery. Then it comes through the umbilical cord and it reaches the trophoblast. So this black color, these finger like projections what I have drawn here are the trophoblast or chorionic villi just I mentioned in the previous one. The chorion and the trophoblast together will form those projections called villi. So each branch of this artery will enter into the chorionic villi. So now it is in close proximity with the blood space there where the mother's oxygen rich blood is there which has lot of nutrients in it, antibodies, everything needed for the baby is there. So it will diffuse. Oxygen will diffuse from the mother's blood to the baby's blood that is artery um, and the nutrients also come in. Now it becomes oxygenated and it joins back. Baby's blood is not spurting out or it is not coming out. Baby's blood come as artery, joins back as vein and going back. But when it is going back as vein, it is red in color because it has its uh, oxygen in it. And also it has all the nutrients uh, for the baby for its body activities. But at the same time, baby will release carbon dioxide and the waste into mother's blood. Then that will go through the mother's vein back to her body where it will be excreted out. So here you can see, is there any mixing happening between the mother's blood and baby's blood? No. The baby's blood is coming inside the villi only. But it is not going and touching mother's blood. But ultimately it is, uh, actually it is, there is a separation. Only through diffusion the substances are moving in and out. So that is the space formed here. So this is the placenta formation, uh, which is actually sustaining the development of the baby for the, during the gestation period. When we talk about the functions of placenta, it uh, provides oxygen for the embryo. Uh, provides nutrients for the embryo and also removes the carbon dioxide and nitrogenous waste from the embryo. Apart from that, it can act as an endocrine tissue. Endocrine means what? The tissue which can secrete hormones. So, which are the hormones secreted by placenta? HCG, human chorionic gonadotrophin. HPL, human placental lactogen. Then relaxing estrogen and a progesterone. So, if the hormones secreted by placenta are, you have to write all the five. But you can say that, this estrogen and progesterone are secreted by other parts as well. Like developing follicles can secrete estrogen that we learned already. So the hormones secreted only by placenta if asked, HCG, HPL. Because relaxin can also be secreted by ovary, which is actually secreted at the last stage of a pregnancy that is during the delivery to relax the cervix and pelvis region. So um, relaxin uh, secreted by two organs, one is ovary and one is placenta. That also you have to remember. Apart from this, uh, during the pregnancy period, thyroid hormones, cortisol also will be very high in the uh, blood of mother. Now one more thing to remember here is, we saw placenta only can secrete HCG and HPL. So if you find the presence of any of these hormones in the blood or urine of a woman, that means she is pregnant. So confirmatory test for pregnancy is done by detecting the presence of these hormones. So we learned about placenta formation. Now after this, now the gestation period or the pregnancy period, then delivery or the parturition and the um, lactation, we will discuss in the next video. Hope you like my videos. If so, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Biology my passion. Thank you for watching.